Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan, and in today's video we'll be making crypto art. Of course, this video is not totally serious and I mostly want to use it to talk about this new market, but still, there are artworks out there that look like this one and are being sold for hundreds or even thousands of dollars. So let's have a look and create one for ourselves. For this scene, I'm using Blender 2.91 and Geometry Nodes. With all of that said, let's get started. Most of these senselessly expensive artworks are cube-shaped, so let's start off with the default cube. With Ctrl and I select everything else and delete it. And now we'll be adding a subdivision surface modifier. Of course for this video I cannot really explain my thought process, I was just going for something abstract and we'll be replicating this design in this video. So let's go into wireframe mode and uncheck optimal display. This way we can see the real wireframe. And now let's change it to simple and give it a subdivision level of 3. Now in newer Blender versions you might have already noticed this new geometry node editor window. And we can use it by adding the geometry nodes modifier. And you can see a new node tree has automatically been generated. And we can start adding in nodes. To actually work with geometry nodes we have to have the modifier selected. If I were to select the subdivision surface modifier the node tree would disappear. So let's select the modifier and start. I want to distribute little cubes to every vertex of this cube right here. So let's add in another cube, move it upwards so it goes out of frame and with F2 give it a good name. Okay, great. Now we can select the cube again and with Shift A add in the point instance node. By itself the point instance node instances an object to every point or vertex of the mesh. If you do not want this, you could also first use the point distribute node to randomly distribute points or vertices on your mesh and then instance to these new points. But I personally like the look of having cubes at each vertex, so I will go with that. Now you might have already noticed that Geometry Nodes uses the attribute workflow which is new to Blender and pretty strange at first. But basically these nodes allow us to manipulate attributes of objects Every object has three attributes we already know, which are scale, rotation and position. And so we can use this attribute fill node to fill the scale attribute with 0.1. Meaning now every cube has the scale of 0.1. Because we are instancing this cube, we can make changes to this cube which will affect our final model. So what I want to do is to add an A bevel modifier and give it some more segments and also shade it smooth. Now we get a much more cleaner look. And you can see that this is almost where I left and rendered it. But I want to add in this abstract animation of the cubes changing sizes in circles. To do this we will need an empty to control the size of the cubes. I don't want it to be this big so I will scale it down to 0.5. Now before we integrate it into geometry nodes, let's add in a circular curve. And with the empty selected, add in the follow path constraint and select the Bezier circle. On the first frame, we can now keyframe the offset and maybe 50 frames later, change the offset to 100 and keyframe it again. Now it should move in circles. Let's also choose linear interpolation. And in the graph editor window, in the end panel under modifiers, choose cycles. Now it should repeat itself seamlessly. Okay, let's integrate this empty with geometry nodes. For this we need to apply the subdivision surface modifier. So let's go up here and hit apply. And let's quickly disable the geometry nodes modifier. We want to add in a vertex group and I will call it weight to drive the scale of our instanced cubes. Let's go into edit mode and assign all of these vertices to the vertex group. And before the geometry nodes modifier let's add in the vertex weight proximity one. Let's choose the vertex group and the empty as our target object and now choose geometry. If we would now go into weight paint mode you can see that the empty paints onto our mesh and we can now use this vertex group as an attribute in geometry nodes. So let's re-enable geometry nodes and add in the attribute mix node. We can now mix multiple attributes. So let's add in another attribute fill node and create a new attribute called scale2 and fill it with the value of 0.05. We can now mix between both of those scales using another attribute right here. The attribute we will use as a factor is of course weight 
which was our previously created vertex group and the two attributes we are mixing between are scale and scale2 and we of course want to apply the result to the scale of the cubes and you can see that this works as expected but you can also see that I reversed the two attributes so let's quickly change that and now it should work just fine. Awesome, we now have our abstract animation in place. All that is left to do now is to add in a camera, which we can quickly do with Shift and A, clear its rotation and location, and move it outwards on the Y axis. Now let's add in another empty, and this time I'll choose plain axes, and we can now parent the camera to the empty with Ctrl and P. And now let's quickly animate this empty to rotate. I want the final scene to be 150 frames long. So on the first frame, let's add in a rotation keyframe. And one frame after the last one, let's rotate it 360 degrees, add in another keyframe and choose linear interpolation with T. You can now see that the camera is moving and we now want to rotate it 90 degrees on the local X axis by pressing X twice. We can also choose to track it to the empty which allows us to move the camera upwards and have it still face our object. I'll quickly choose a square resolution and a custom focal length. And now we have our final animation done. The only thing that is left to do now is to add basic lighting. So let's go over to cycles and choose a darker world background. And I'll add in an area lamp, move it upwards and to the side and rotate it so it faces our object. And now I'll use a pretty high power of maybe 1500 and call it a day. And yeah, that's basically it. This is how we can create these abstract crypto artworks you have seen all over the internet lately. But the main reason why I created this video is that I wanted to hear your opinion on crypto art. Personally, I think that crypto art is a great alternative for artists to make some money, but this tutorial goes to show that even beginners can create artworks like the ones that are being sold for hundreds of dollars. To me, this means that the art gets its value from the person that created it and not because it's good art. Of course, this isn't always true, so take this statement with a grain of salt. Anyways, I hope this video was fun to watch and I would love to read your views on this topic in the comments down below. And with that said, we'll see each other next Saturday.